the greater works, the greater faith, the greater love. And we invite you just to worship with us and say, thank you. Some of you may not think you have enough to hang out about, but just think about what he's just done for you this morning.
Yeah. 
we took some time out to recognize our breast cancer survivors. And I know there's those that are watching us online and if you are a survivor here today, you know, we ask that you stand to your feet to be recognized if you've, if you've, if you've overcome breast cancer. Like I said, I've talked to many that I know that are, that are watching us live. Amen. We have one that's in here today. Amen. Can we praise God for victory? And he's still here. We call him to hold up. The one is able to heal, so we pray God for his healing power. Praise the Lord God. We thank God for you, my sister, and those that are with us on social media. We praise God for you. There are many that did not make it through. Those that are not with us today, and we honor them for their fight, for their courage to stand in there. And I encourage all of our mothers, our daughters. You know, it tells us that one in eight will be diagnosed with breast cancer. And it's so important for you all to get that early detection. Get tested. You know, our race, we tend not to go to the doctor to get checked out. But I encourage all of you, don't get checked out regularly. Because we love you. We want you to hang with, hang with us a long time. Amen. Amen. Early detection is the key. Amen. 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 So this Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we honor you today. We honor you today. Amen. 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 It's giving time. It's giving time. And this is the part of service we all have an opportunity to participate in. And we always tell you that it's a blessing to give. It's truly a blessing to give. I get excited about giving. Because I truly believe a lot of my blessings are attached to my giving. Because when God can trust me to release he can trust me to open my hands to give. It lets him know he can trust me with what he's given me. So today, as God has purpose in your heart to give, we ask that you give deliberately to this ministry, because this ministry, this community, this ministry, this kingdom, when you give here, you give it back to the kingdom. You give it to the kingdom of God. So we ask that you would sow. Bible tells us that we ought to give. We ought to tithe. We ought to give that offering. Many of us, we are we're hurting ourselves financially because we're holding on to what God has given us. And he said, I just need a portion of it back. Sow that seed today. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time with us today, if you give it by cash or check, we always give on the way out the door. If you give it by cash out, Dollar sign Greater Love One. You can go to our website, greaterlovefriscocity.com, and give that way. PayPal, give for five, many ways of giving. Amen. If you have any questions, get with our readers, and they will be able to help you out. Father God, we thank you always for the opportunity to give. We thank you for provision. God, we thank you for jobs. God, we thank you, oh God, that we have food on our table, clothes on our back. God, we were able to get to and fro, God. It's all because of you. You are a provider, God. Because, God, you provided for us. Because you take care of us. We, God, we're going to be obedient to what you called us to do. God, it is to sow. Sow, God. So, God, today we ask that you will honor our seed. We ask, oh, God, you will honor our gifts. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all God's people say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. <laughs>
Sheba that I also brought into the land of Babylon. But they were the only one not willing to buckle down under the pressures of life. It seemed that most of the other Jewish people were allowing themselves to be just assimilated into the culture. Where are you at today? Are you trying to blend into the culture that is around you? Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Being a Christian, amen, is more, amen, than just, amen, coming to church. Amen, being in some assembly, amen, or in some program, amen, it, it is, amen, a difference in your life, and it calls for a walk, and it calls for a lot, amen, of challenges. How are you handling the challenges that are going on right now in this world that we live in? Psalms 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the ways of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You see, these Hebrews were the only ones that regardless of the outcome or the possible outcome, they were willing to trust God. What are we willing to do in what's going on around us? Are we just going to buckle under, amen, and go with the flow of things as we see that things are changing each and every day? For the past, amen, couple of years, amen, there have never been years like this that I know of. And yet, amen, I've seen, amen, in the years, amen, that I've lived on this earth, a constant change, amen, not so much for the better, amen, but for the worse. But what will we do within those changes? How are you handling those changes? Are you going with the flow? Are you allowing, amen, to yourself to be assimilated into the world, amen, just so, amen, you won't, amen, be looked down on and so that you can become a part of the crowd? These Hebrew boys were not certain that God was going to keep them from the flames. I mean, they had faith and they, they claimed they, that God could do this, but they weren't 100% for sure. We don't know, I mean, when we go to the doctor, and although the doctor says, you, we found cancer, amen, in your breast, amen, that you are going to be able to come out of this. But somehow, some way, you have to grab hold of faith, amen, and believe that my God is able. That might be what you said, Dr. D, but that ain't what my God said. I'm sure, amen, that many, amen, of a breast cancer survival or any other type, amen, of cancer or illness survival, amen, can truly say, amen, that there were God days, amen, and all they had to hold on to was faith in God. And they helped on. We see in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, So we walk by faith and not by sight. Have I the two and four, amen, says, Look at the proud one. His soul is not upright, but the righteous, the just, shall live by faith. Our times are no different, amen. We are citizens of heaven, and this world really isn't our home. We are combated with so many changes in this land that we don't even really recognize the world, amen, that we were born into anymore. As citizens of heaven and not of this world anymore, we believe God is in the midst of whatever life throws at us. Come may, come way, come may, whatever, amen, that life can throw, amen, if you, amen, know the Lord, amen, he's in the midst of it and God got you. Regardless, amen, of what your friends say, God got you. Regardless of what your boss man say, God got you. Regardless of what your mama say, God got you. Mama may say you'll never mount up to anything, but baby, God got you. Daddy may say you'll never be like your dad, amen, but God got you. As citizens, amen, we, amen, don't 
don't understand this world anymore because we're no longer of this world. Many of the faith workers or walkers that Hebrews 11 talks about believe God to the very end. Some did not even receive the promise. Many of them did not even receive the promise, amen, that they were looking for, amen, but they still believed God, and seeing them afar off, they were persuaded in their mind. Faith, amen, is sin and afar off, and although it's not in your hands, amen, it's still seeing that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask for or dream about. And so we see it all off and we confess, I am a stranger and I'm a pilgrim passing through this land, amen, but I know God got me. The Bible lets us know faith is the substance of the things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. I don't see my healing, but I have hope in it that God in it got me. I don't see my deliverance, amen, but I have hope, amen, that God got me. Hope, amen, is what carried, amen, the slave, amen, down through, amen, the telescope of time, amen, as they worked in the cotton fields, amen. Hope is what carried them, amen, as, amen, they were whipped, amen, by the mass, amen, that things are going to get better, amen. It may not happen in my lifetime, but it's coming. Faith, amen. Hope carried them through. Faith and hope carried them in the children of Israel through. This faith kept them going on through the persecutions and through their trials, embracing the fact that God got this. Changes are being made in our society that more and more is pushing the Christian people back. And we find that it seems like we're losing our voice in society. And it seems that the Christian people, amen, no longer have as much power, like, and as much voice, amen, and veracity, amen, as we once had, amen, in this old country, amen, that we live in, amen. But still, I know, amen, that God got the final say. We don't have to, amen, look down, amen, at the times, and we don't have to feel bad about our situations, amen, because if you are a faith believer, amen, you know God got you. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Nothing that people say about you, amen, can prosper. God got you. We have become more of the minority than the majority. So it seems, but we must look up and be encouraged. Paul puts it like this. Second Corinthians 4, 8, 8 and through 9, we are hard pressed on every side, Paul said, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. What makes amen the amen mother, amen, with amen, amen, ten children, amen, and no man to help her to take care of those ten kids, amen, and to be able to smile, amen, amen, and be able to amen rejoice, amen, because she knows, amen, God got me, amen. I may not have everything that I want, amen, but God got me and he's taking care of my needs. He's taking me through. So Paul said that though, amen, we're pressed on every side, we're not going to have a way to turn, and the perplexity is amongst us, amen, but still we ain't pushed on that. Although, amen, we ain't going to go through, we're not in despair. I want you to know that God, people, amen, that are trusted in God, if anything, amen, we're like popcorn, amen, the more the heat, the higher I pop. Woo! Glory! Paul said we're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We struck down, but we're not destroyed. The Hebrew boys was in a dilemma here. If they bowed down to this image, they would deny their faith. But if they didn't, they could lose their life. God allows us to get into situations that just to, to see how strong our convictions are. You say you believe in me. You say that you have faith in me. Well, I'm going to allow circumstances, amen, to come. I'm going to turn the heat up, amen, in your life. I'm going to see, amen, are you really sold out for me? I'm 
going to see you. You really love me like you say you love me. I'm going to allow this to be taken from you and allow that to be taken from you. And I'm going to see that you still going to hold to my unchanging hand. Do you hear me? You get it? Many times we will reason with our conscience just so we can be a part of and not become ostracized for our convictions. And, and we'll say to ourselves, God know my heart. You know, sometimes when I mean, we allow ourselves into such situations and stay in situations and go along with situations because and then we have this thing, God know my heart. And that's the thing, he do know our heart. And this is why a lot of times he try, allows your heart to be tried to see if you know your heart. That you ain't in tune to me as you say you are because your life is put out, amen. And then you is talking about giving up. Your health don't got shattered, amen. Now you're talking about I can't go no farther, amen. But if you're truly in tune with God, when they cut your life out, it's hallelujah in the house. When they give you your peace, you God anyhow. When the doctor say hey, you don't have a six months, that's all right. I'm going on anyhow. This is what was happening with these guys. Where is the heart of the people for me, God says? All bowed down in the pit, but these boys, all of the Jewish people within the province of Babylon. When that music played, every one of them began to bow down to that image. These were people that knew God. These were people that had brought, been brought through the Red Sea. People that were fed with men and water from a rock and quail from the sky. These are people that God gave land to that didn't have to work for it. He gave houses that they didn't have to build. These people, amen, when they, amen, heard the sound of the music, amen, they bowed down to the God that Nebuchadnezzar had planted up. All bowed down. It doesn't make mention of Daniel, so we can only assume that Daniel must have been all, amen, taking some business somewhere else, but everybody else that was there bowed down. Except for these boys. The law. Daniel chapter 3, verses 4 through 6 says, Oh, you it is commanded, O people. This is what the law was. Nations and languages. That at what time you hear the sound of all of this musical instruments. You are to fall down and worship this golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso fall down and worship shall the same hour, those who don't fall down and worship shall at the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fire furnace. Here's the response of the people. Daniel 3 and 7 says, therefore at the time when this music began to play, when all of this music began to people, all the people, the nations and the neighbors fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now, listen to this story. Put yourself in their shoes. Because I know we got some judgment folks, judgmental folks out in the audience today. And probably got some up here on the, on the roster here today. I don't know. But I know that there's some judgmental folks in there as they listen to this. Amen. Who so all into God that they'll say in their own oh, no. Look at them weak folks. You know it's easy to sit back and cast judgment at other people's action. But until you don't walk a mile in their shoes, tell you ain't been got where you didn't have no lights. And this one got cold. Tell you them that when you ain't got nothing but some water and then it's some oatmeal. Tell you them that and then when you ain't got a change of clothes. And then it's easy to say what and then you would and wouldn't do. But until you don't walk in a mile in their shoes, can you really say what you won't do? Or oh, somebody say, oh, I believe God is going to get how hard it gets for me. I don't care. I know it's hard for me, but for me, I... You, I, I believe you gotta please God anyway. But you ain't walking for these. You, you ain't on them lonely nights, amen. You ain't seen the hard 
or die. Who in here ready to die? Throw your hand up. Lord, the preacher ain't got their hand up. You see, for the most part, ain't none of us in here ready to die. Everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. But I don't want to die. I want the I want the rapture to take place, so I ain't got to go through that. <laughs> but their options was bow or die. And I'm telling you now, I mean, just like every one of us, most of us, a lot of us, would say if this happened to us, God know my heart. I'm gonna bow down with my knee, but my heart ain't bow down. Now, what kind of sense is that? <laughs> when you're doing now, what you're doing now for the sake of a good name and being popular, do you go with the grain or against the grain? God's people always have to go against the grain. Their guidance is in the word of God. Our word, amen, should determine how we live our lives. I don't care what they did except they're in the White House. It's what us said, the Lord. I don't care if they say, amen, amen, you live with them for 20 years, amen, it's common law marriage. That's not what the word says. I don't care if they got names for lies, black lies, amen, yellow lies, white lies, all this kind of stuff, and then the Bible says all lies just have their part in the lake was burning with fire and brimstone. I don't care what they Way we supposed to do it, amen. And they said, Go right, amen. You got to go right, but the word says you need to go this way, you better go this way. Let God be true and never man my life. But I'm always the response of the Hebrew boys when brought before the king, and when the charges are really treason, not following the orders here could be taken as overthrowing the government. The only sentence that would be, would be death. There was not going to be any probation. It was going to either do or die. What you going to do when the government changes? Because it's going to change. Enjoy your freedom now because you're losing it. As the years go by, you don't even realize it. And it's going to change and they're going to, amen, take the mark. Or die. What you going to do when they pull you out of your houses because you don't have a mark? When they take your kids from you because you don't have a mark? See, the devil will touch wherever he thinks you Huh? He will touch you wherever he thinks you're going to blast. If it's your beautiful wife, he'll go and mess with your wife. If it's your children, he'll go and mess with your children. If it's your money, he'll go and mess with your money. Whatever it takes to bring you down, he'll do it. What you gonna do? But listen to the charges and then listen to their response. Daniel 3, 9 through 18 tells us what the charges was and that was the law is when the music played, you bow down to the God. But the response of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was this. O king, they were respectful. O king Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you concerning this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your God, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. The king says, okay. Here's the sentence for them to die in the flames. And then these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fire of furnace. God could have he could have stopped it right then. 
but he chose not to. Sometimes, amen, God will deliver you before the fire hits you. But a lot of times, he will deliver you while you're in the fire. We sometimes, I, I prayed one time, Lord, deliver me. I was going through for some stuff, and I said, Lord, deliver me. He said, maybe I want to deliver you while you're going through it. The flames was hot. Daniel 3, 22, the furnace exceeding hot. The flames of the fire, it was so hot that the flames of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men fell down, bound into the midst of the fire furnace. The heat of our situation is turning up. Immorality is being chosen over morals. Crookedness in our law proceeding over justice for all as promised. Uncertain times, but still, faith is still the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. We don't know our future, but God does. Health problems, God got you. Job, God got you. Church participation and support, amen, the lack thereof, God got you. Matthew 28 and 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. It makes no difference what it looked like. You just do what you know that God has told you to do, because God got this. Many times God will let you, amen, do some stupid things, amen, by man's terms. Man will look at what you are doing because God told you to do it and say how stupid that really is. But nevertheless, amen, don't be worried about what they say. God got you. He told the Israelites to walk into the Red Sea and it parted. Daniel kept on praying, putting the lines in, but God had him. He told Peter to walk out on the troubled water. Peter got about that boat and he began to walk and the water became painted. Why? Because God had him. Deliverance, though, came in the midst of a flame. Daniel 3, 24 through 27 says, Then, Amen, Nebuchadnezzar looked, Amen, and he was so surprised and he was shocked, Amen, because he looked and said, Didn't we put four, three men into the midst of the fire? And they say, Yes, we did. He answered and said, I see four men that's loose and they're walking in the midst of the fire, and they don't have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Don't you tell me that God, Amen, is limited in what He can do. God can do anything. He took, Amen, seven days, Amen, and He formed, and then this earth, Amen, Amen. He took some dust, Amen, and made and formed a man and breathed into his body, and man became a living soul. God is able to do anything. He got your situation. He got my situation. How do you know it? Because I know that he lives inside of me. But one day I heard the word. I didn't hug my heart. I didn't stiff in my neck. But I humbled on down and I called on Jesus. The man was preaching about Jesus. The man who walked down in there through 42 generations in it. Stepped out of eternity and stepped over here, amen, into my time, amen. He was, amen, the Son of God, amen. He was the fourth man in the frame. He was the rock, amen, that the water came from. He was now, amen, from on high. Amen, he was bread in a starving land. He was water in a thirsty land. He was Jesus, the man who came to set me free. They took this man and hung him high and stretched him wide between two thieves he hung his head and died but I'm so glad that's not how the story is three days later he rose again I wasn't there and you wasn't there but I know that he lived cause I can feel him in my soul I feel him in my hand feel him in my feet can feel him all over me. And so when my trials and tribulations come, I don't walk around wearing all the time. I keep on believing and knowing that God, God got there.
God got this. Look up, people. Look up. Don't look down. But look up. Because all the things that we got so much confidence in, amen, will soon let you die. Your new ride. Hey, just off the showroom floor. Water running down the interstate. And all of a sudden, the engine like come on, and it's a brand new car. But God got you. Mama will sometimes let you down. We'll let one another down. But God will never let us down. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, has he done anything good? Let your mind go back. Sometimes you need to go back to memory lane and see what he brought you through. If he brought you through that, he's going to bring you through this. If he took you out of that, he'll take you out of this. If he carried you up from here, he'll carry you up from there. God got this. Tell it on them. Spray your shoulders back. Stick out your chest. And tell that devil, God got this. All the negative thoughts that the enemy can bring through your mind. Just tell them God got this. I don't care how bad it looks. I know. Been there, done that. God had it. I've been through some stuff. But out of all that I've been through, God brought me through. God, He got this. Hallelujah. How many of you know God got this? Doesn't matter what you're going through, He got it. He's in control. Can we praise God for Pastor Shepherd? Hallelujah. Listen, I want to thank all of you for coming out on this fifth Sunday and worshiping with us. Thank God for Pastor Davis being in the house today. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. All of our first time. Yes, civic leaders, we're thankful for you being here. Uh, we still have some more t-shirts for those that desire uh, our Great Love t-shirt that we recognize, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and some more back there if you want to purchase them. And anybody ready for next month? All right, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to get you today. <laughs> Next month, we're going to continue our sermon series, The Power of God, and I'm just excited about the word next week, amen. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. You got to come here, you got to be here, watch us online and see what the Lord has to say, but I'm just excited about the word, amen, amen. amen. I, I see Deacon Williams in the house. I want to thank my brother for being here from Macedonia. God bless you and his wife. Amen. I don't want to get to recognize people. I don't want to miss somebody. I'm just thankful to see all of you. Amen. It's time to go home. We'll go to our next service. We got another service to go to with most of us. Stand your feet. Yes, let us all stand to our feet. And I'm going to ask you, you don't know nothing about this. But <laughs> I want to ask Pastor Chevron, Pastor uh, Claus to come up, please, to the stage. Um, they always put me in charge of speaking, and I don't really speak that well, but um, Pastor's Appreciation was first Sunday, and we wanted to uh, do something for you guys. We wanted everybody to do something for you. Um, and we're going to give you guys these cards. And come on, come on up, please. <laughs> And um, we also have some goodies for y'all. And 
that what this is is an affirmation jar. Now, Ryan Dean left it at the house. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so that's on me. But what these affirmation jars are is we're going to give you these jars. Now, you don't go through them a whole day now, why people? Because why people are candy and stuff. So we don't go through <laughs> don't go through this 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 affirmation jar on that. This is supposed to be something that's done over the course of time. So when you have a bad day, you go to this affirmation jar. If something doesn't seem right, something doesn't feel right, and you're praying about something, go to this affirmation jar. Look, read these letters. They're all typed out and, and, and written out by your by your worship team. And you're gonna open these letters. And they're supposed to give encouragement. They're supposed to give you an extra boost within the day. And we also have candy that's wrapped with little words. So if you want a quick word or you want a quick something, you just reach into your candy jar. You look at it. It may say love. It may say peace. It may say hope. And we want you guys to stay encouraged. But I want you guys to step forward. And let's appreciate our pastors here at Greater World. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. All the stuff that they go through, all the things that they've done for us, we just want to say thank you, thank you, keep up the good work, and we are so blessed to have you guys. Amen. 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 We just want to, I'm speaking on behalf of everybody, we're going to let you go. We want to thank you for just your love, uh, your support for the ministry, your support for the pastors here um, in the Bruton campus as well, and we just want to tell you that we love you. If I could speak for all of them, I guarantee they'll tell you we love you. We love you. We love you. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I love you, I love y'all. and there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, look at another neighbor and say it like you really mean to say, neighbor, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it.